Uh, just before we do that, Nicholas Sturgeon, it turns out, is going to write a book, and I've had some uh, very, very amusing titles suggested for it. Uh, the one that everybody seems to be going for is Mein Kampfer Van, which is not bad, I have to say. Uh, Alex, a very good uh, morning to you. Hello, Mike. How are you doing up there? Are you still... I don't know how you're managing it, by the way, because uh, although I stayed up a lot later probably than you did on Saturday night, uh, you're doing this every single night. You're like some kind of, you know, uh, latter-day um, Rolling Stones moving uh, uh, sort of uh, rock star. <laughs> well, what keeps me going is the thought of outlasting David Davis. So ah. we're in this, uh, we're in this <laughs> death contest together to see who drops first. Can I have to correct you, but it's not me that's arranging this. It's the amazing... Miss Tasmina Ahmed Sheikh who's mm. brought all this together. I, I, I'm a I'm a mere pawn in the game like yourself, and yes. David David. Not Elner, of course. Where Dame Elner Lang will grace her. <laughs> yes, but we'll, we'll get to Elner in a second. But let me ask you first up about um, Nicola Sturgeon's new book because apparently she's decided uh, it's time for her to uh, reveal a deeply personal uh, and interesting autobiography details to be published in 2025. I mean, I'm assuming you're expecting at least one chapter that she may devote to you. I was expecting rather more than a single chapter, Michael. <laughs> I mean, goodness sake. Well, it's sort of, you but, know, I see it as the, the salmon years, you know. I, I was interested in the, the 2025 uh, potential publication date. So, obviously, there's obviously a, a lot of writing to be done. Uh, well, I mean, there's a lot of remembering to be done because several people have pointed out it's going to take her a while to get around to writing it all down because every time she gets asked about things, she doesn't seem to remember what happened. Well, like some may say that I couldn't possibly comment. No, of course you couldn't. Um, but, I mean, uh, it is extraordinary, isn't it, that uh, the investigation goes on. I know you don't always like to talk about it. Um, Hamza Youssef continues in his role as uh, the play-acting First Minister of Scotland. Um, nobody's really sure what's going on inside of Holyrood, and nobody's really sure what's going on inside of the police investigation. What do you expect to happen over the course of the next few weeks and months? Well, I mean, let's, let's just uh, let the police go on with their work. I, I, one thing I'm sure of uh, is that they, they won't set on a, a time scale decided by politicians or, if I may say so, even by members of the media. Shocking. Uh, the police, they, they go on their own timetable, do their work and come to a conclusion and we should just let them go on with yeah. it. Yeah. As Hums has concerned, I, I think he does have to establish a, a new direction for his leadership uh, and he has to distance himself from what has gone before. He has to put clear blue water uh, between his administration and what has happened previously. Yes. Do you suspect he should also get himself a new credit card as well? Because obviously the old one uh, has been maxed out, it would seem. 14 million quids worth of yoga classes and uh, um, I don't know exactly what you call hospitality at an airport. I've never had any of that. Well, I, I was amazed about that because, you know, look, that is frankly a civil service matter. Uh, you know, obviously, it's, it's fair game for the press. I mean, at first sight, it looks totally ludicrous. Of course it does. Uh, and some of the individual items are, uh, are quite extraordinary. I mean, the, the nail varnish uh, uh, stuck out for me. I mean, mm. certainly, I can tell you exclusively, I did not wear nail varnish in my entire time uh, as First Minister. <laughs> uh, but, the, you know, what the, the key thing, and this is what I couldn't understand about Hamza's reaction, he announces an inquiry. This is a matter for the permanent secretary of the Scottish government. It's a civil service matter. This is civil service approved expenditure. Uh, for, so why Hamza wants to take ownership of this and say I'm having an inquiry, but actually he should be saying the permanent secretary should have an inquiry. Right. You know, I, he, he seems to approach. You know, he approaches every every interview and, and desperately seeks a car crash to be involved in. Right. Yeah, he sort of almost wants to take ownership of everything that's gone wrong. Yeah, well, that, that's, I mean, it's very honourable, I think, you know, I mean, all credit to him. I mean, I mean he, he obviously doesn't lack for courage, but, ah. but, but sometimes you have to, I mean, look, it's a good rule in politics to do what you're meant to be doing and to sort that out uh, before you start intruding to, into other people's nightmares. Yes, quite. Now, before I speak to Dame Eleanor Lang, uh, would I be right in assuming that you so far, uh, as the eyes have it, uh, have won every single debate that you've had uh, to be involved in? Yes, I mean, the results have been quite quite close on some occasions, overwhelming, of course, when you were there, Mike, but, uh, but nonetheless... Well, I, won the, I believe I won the moral high ground on that particular occasion. Well, I, I, to be quite fair, Mike, I, I thought you were performing brilliantly. <laughs> and I, I thought you were carrying the audience with you until you started systematically insulting every group in the audience <laughs> and teaching them buses, doctors, firemen. <laughs> and I 
I'm in the audience looking around and say, wait a minute, I'm a firefighter. Yeah. And until that moment in the summing up, you, you were, you were, it was an extraordinary, it was a bravado performance and bravado performance until mm. that, that precise moment where you singled out every single working group in the audience and gave, gave them a piece of your mind. I mean, the only people you didn't insult were the journalists there. I wonder yeah. what that was. Yeah, well, because I didn't, I didn't wish to open up any old wounds, you know. But uh, but there we are. Listen, I see you might have Paul Sinclair there talking about journalists. I'll give you some uh, info on him later be, before you go well, up, listen, up against well, him. Uh, but but well, let's well, let's uh, well, let's talk well. to, to to Dame Eleanor Lang. Dame Eleanor, you've been roped into this presumably against your will, have you? <laughs> uh, no, not against my will. I I I think the Edinburgh Festival Fringe is. Uh, the best thing happening in the country, not just in the summer, but any time. I love it. And when I was asked to do this, I couldn't resist. Right. Well, you've got some uh, heavy... Well, I'm not that you haven't done it before, but you've got some sort of quite big shoes to fill. And I say that metaphorically speaking with John Burko. He was brilliant uh, the night uh, he was uh, he was the speaker in our, in our case. Uh, will, you, will you adopt a similar tone to him? Uh, no, I've never adopted a similar tone to John Burko. <laughs> but... Um, I've done the same job. I've sat in the Speaker's chair in the House of Commons for 10 years yeah. now. And, um, and I do it differently from John. You know, while he does those Burkoisms, I'm more of a cross between Lady Bracknell and Miss Jean Brodie. Yes. And it's different. Different. Uh, but, but I think we get, we get the same result. You know, I've heard, I have heard that the, the performance you did, Mike, was very good and that you were a bit rowdy. Well, we don't allow that. So, yeah. you know, I'm there to keep order. Yes. And, the, and the, the, the motion before the House tonight is that this House would abolish the House of Lords. Is that right? Is that what it is? You see, you see, I am the impartial chairman and therefore the substance of the motion is not of significance <laughs> to me. What I'm interested in is keeping the balance yes, and being fair. Naturally. See, that's, Listen, that's... If, only, if only you were back down here um, and we could have you as the, uh, uh, as the operational speaker uh, in the House of Commons, I'm worried about the current speaker of the House, who I would never accept, expect you to, uh, to slag off, but I'm worried he's getting a bit, bit big for his boots. Oh, no, he's an excellent speaker. Lindsay Hoyle is a really good speaker. I've worked with him for many, many years. I don't agree with him on everything, but I agree with him on most things, and, and he does the job really well. Yes. Good. OK, listen, let me uh, wish you all the best for it. Dame Eleanor Lang, thanks very much indeed. Back to Alex Salmon just for a moment. Alex, have you got any words of advice for um, Rishi Sunak, who finds himself <laughs> abroad on holiday while all around him is not going too well at home? What should he do? Well, well... I'll quickly deal with Sunak in a second, but first to the more important matters. Let me tell you, if Dame Eleanor Lang had been in the chair when you were debating, it would have been off with your head. Never mind the House of Lords tonight, they'd be off with your head. Dame Eleanor Lang, as you put it, Miss Jean Brody only accepts the creme de la creme. Yes. I'm not sure you, not sure you, would, have, you would have qualified for Listen, that. Listen, I'm well aware that I was the warm-up act. You know, I, 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 I take no, uh, I take no d d d new delusions about that. And as far as Rishi Sunak is concerned, I mean, the only, the only thing I can think about looking at his government, I, I think he's, he's stepped off in holiday just to illustrate how much chaos there is when he's not there. <laughs> it'll be the best Basically, he's just trying to say, I know things are dreadful, I know things are bad, I know interest rates are sky high, I know your mortgages are terrible, I know your businesses are being destroyed. But look, when I'm not there, it's even worse. It really is. Um, that is the problem. We actually don't want him to come back. You know, we shall see how that goes. Alex, anyway, let's have a good night tonight, and I'm sure we'll see you back down here surely uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, Alex Salmon tonight, former First Minister, the Eyes Have It. You can still get tickets uh, if you look on Twitter uh, for the Eyes Have It. Uh, I'll retweet it out uh, in a little while. Uh, there are still tickets available at the Spiegel Tent in Edinburgh. It's a great night and uh, well worth uh, going along to.